you, Tony Cook. Um, he is going to do a presentation for Life, uh, sorry, for Youth for Life Learning Network and Overview. It's all yours, Tony. Thank you. Um, today we wanted to just give an overview, kind of an update of where we are with the for Youth for Life Learning Network. And um, we'll go over a few things just to show you where things are at this point. There's a handout that's being passed around that we, that's entitled a transformational learning network for youth. There's a lot of things that we need to consider for the youth audience, and it's transformational in nature. That's and that's kind of how our what our approach is. Uh, to start with, I want to go back to a PowerPoint. Some of this is the old, um, some of the original ideas behind this uh, learning network. We wanted to provide a reliable and credible knowledge resource for an online youth audience, for one. We realized early on that as we do that, we need to provide a safe and secure online learning environment for the youth and the adults that serve them. And that implies the idea of uh, logging in or user registration kind of function that we would eventually get to. And then, of course, the extension itself is a platform and collaborative workspace for educators from land-grant universities to contribute to a common knowledge uh, resource for youth. Um, and then our mission is essentially, well, for Youth for Life is a concept, just a concept that we're working toward. And what we have now is a prototype, and but there's larger you know, decisions to be made to, to, to establish a, and deploy a national system. Some other things that we're mindful of, of course, a safe online learning environment. School-age youth is our target audience, uh, of which 4-H is a primary part. We want to focus on the individual learner, as we, as we heard yesterday in, uh, in one of the talks. Uh, his approach was uh, in regard to dealing with the individual. What does the client experience as they connect to our, our system? And so, eventually, we would see a personal profile and um, um, learning portfolio kind of experience. And I'll mention a little later digital badges, and it fits with the learning portfolio. We also realize that learners uh, will need to engage with each other, peer-to-peer -peer and in groups, and also, at the same time, being mindful of secure environments for those groups especially for young people 12 and under. 12 and under comes under COPA, which is Child Online Privacy and Protection Act. 12 and under basically means that they can participate with parental permission, which means you have to know who the parent is. And, and it, it gets to be a challenge as we move towards this uh, uh, kind of system. Um, secure learning environment closed versus open, for instance. Facebook is totally open, so what do we do for primarily 12 and under? And then for 13 and older, which they, they can participate on their own, you still want to provide you know, a moderate level of security for uh, an environment, learning environment. Interfacing with social media, providing ways to interact with adults, um, there's another challenge in regard to an, a, a platform like this, and that is uh, having approved adults in, in the environment that are going to work with groups of kids. So in 4-H offline, we approve adults for, as volunteer leaders. Go through, they go through a process to be approved uh, leaders. Same kind of thing will have to happen in an online learning environment. So we're looking at knowledge platform and using various tools to, to support that. Uh, learning in the cloud is a concept that, that may be a part of this. Um, some of the features that we're looking at, of course, is the possibility of a cloud type environment. Of course, the collaborative workspace for faculty and staff that contributing to the content areas. Development software, because we're looking at new things. In fact, digital badges is a brand new thing. Potentially down the way, uh, virtual learning environments, 3D type, second life type environments. 
focusing on high, con high interest content areas. How do we do that? And we're looking at the idea of uh, online learning communities so there'd be a sort of a hub of learning activity around a high interest area. This is an illustration about some of the things that would happen around that knowledge platform for extension youth content. Um, social media, searches, you know, primary searches, basic searches, uh, news feeds, knowledge interfaces to other sources, um, virtual learning facilitators, who's moderating a learning experience who, on an open public site or even inside a secure site, uh, what's the interface look like to the learners, um, learning communities, how does that work? I want to go now to our current site. This is the Science for Youth site on eExtension. And this, it was our first uh, site. We, that's our, one, our first primary landing area, landing page. And we focus on science. Um, we're looking at agricultural sciences, water, energy, geospatial technology, natural environment, and many more. And some of those that are coming on during this year of optimization um, will be financial literacy. And these, these will be strengthened, each one, water, energy, technology, and so forth. Robotics is, on the, is in the queue to address. And there's a group of, of uh, faculty and staff that are interested in robotics. Aerospace will come eventually, and any other area. We changed our name to For Youth for Life to, to allow us to accommodate any, top, any content area and building our COP into a network. Um, the, another page that we have is AgZone, and that's coming along nicely. The e-extension environment, these basic public pages, they're a website, and they're the same as the, public, the general public pages. So we're looking at ideas for uh, creating a, a different kind of interface for the youth audience. And one of those is something we call IW2K, which if it plays out like we think, it would be an, more like an app. And so that they would access the youth audience is on mobile devices. And so we wanted to provide a way for them to interface with us via um, mobile devices. So IW2K is, stands for I want to know, and it functions like an app. I may be able to show that to you in a second. We're also creating pages we call our learning community pages. And this is an example. This is our For Youth for Life uh, primary page just for the overall project of For Youth for Life uh, learning network. It's a WordPress site, and uh, it'll feature those areas of, that we're supporting. And you see there, uh, that's MOOCs in action. Um, MOOCs, are, of course, are massive open online courses. There's a, an example of IW2K and what it might look like on a, on a uh, mobile device. Digital badges, which I'm going to speak about in a, in a second. Um, and let's see what else. Oh, the various ways we can present content. Digital badges. Digital badges are uh, it's a project we started a couple of years ago. And digital badges are basically a um, digital form of recognizing learning achievements or, ch or achievements in learning. Traditionally in 4-H, 4-H we've used ribbons, medals, certificates, and so forth. Well, digital badges are a, a digital form of recognizing learning. I'll sh go to the badge directory real quick. These are our first badges. They're all robotics related. I'll go to a badge page, and you'll see information about the badge itself and a description of the criteria, what it takes to earn that badge, and then a button to start earning the badge. And that takes you into, a, you log into an environment where you submit your information about what you've done. Um, you get to a point where um, you've earned the badge to be quick. And I'll, di I'll just, just show you an example of what that might look like.
There's a user profile for just a test user. You go to My Badges, and this person, this particular person has no badges. Um, or this particular test user has no badges. I'll log out and go to another one real quick. <clears throat> so this one has robot movement. This shows that they've earned the badge. And then there's an evidence page. There's details that are associated with the badge. This kind of information is um, uh, embedded in the, somewhat embedded in the image itself. So that image, that badge can be portable, can be pushed to uh, Facebook, for instance, to, be, to share with others. But this is the kind of information that would be associated with that badge. So it's specific to an organization that issues it. Uh, specific to the, the badge uh, criteria, and then there's an ev specific to a person that it's issued to. And in this case, it's issued to user 2, and uh, this is that person's, that user's badge page. That could be printed out somewhat like a cer certificate. And then another uh, tool we're tr looking at, this is a learning management system, and if you're going to have a digital badge kind of system, and that's a, a recognizing learning achievements, you need an LMS, a learning management system. So we're looking at, um, this is called Canvas, and it's very easy to create a course in here, and they have a badge function. And you can go through this procedure, it works just like the other one, the other site, uh, as far as getting through the course, and getting to the uh, point where we use rubrics and surveys in, in uh, measuring the, um, the effort put forth by the learner and get to a point where, the, where a badge is issued. And that would, that's essentially what the badge page would look like in this environment. So we're looking at various options for building a learning system for young people. Um, basically, my time's up. Is, are there any questions? Jerry, do you have anything to add? My colleague Jerry Hammonds is here today, and she's um, my right right arm in regard to this kind of work. And um, I appreciate all that she does. Tony, we've really enjoyed building um, or working with the badges system. Can you tell us a little bit about um, if someone would? Be interested in obtaining a badge in maybe in that LMS or in the, the system that you built and how they would take that out of the system and kind of carry it with them through life maybe how it would enhance a um, uh, someone's portfolio in the in the long run or how they could show those off at a later date one of the things we're looking at in um, this I mentioned earlier e-portfolios this particular LMS has an e-portfolio option. That's, that's the e-portfolio option, but it also, with badges integrated into this particular uh, LMS, it has a page for badges. And on this, this, I've logged in as myself, so I'm the editor of these courses, and here you wouldn't necessarily see a badge because I haven't earned a badge. But this would be the page where badge, badges would show up. And from here, they can be shared via Facebook or shared with Mozilla, which has, supports the open badges uh, infrastructure. And so your badge could reside there and be viewed by the public. Share it with your peers, share it with your uh, uh, potential employers, uh, potential application for uh, scholarships and so forth. Uh, so the value of badges is just beginning to be realized and in the 4-H world, that's something that we think uh, uh, will play out very well as we, as we get this system to a deployable state. Does that help? Any other questions? Could be a part, used a part of the record book yes. as far as scholarships were concerned. 
We think of ePortfolio as an electronic version of a record book. Traditionally, 4-H is very rich in what it's done over the last hundred years or so, and, uh, but it's all offline. Well, the world has changed and digital technology is here, and we're trying to find ways to bring 4-H into that environment and bring, create opportunities for young people to engage in, in a rich learning resource and do that in a digital environment. Not to diminish anything that's done offline, but to create a way to do that online. And even uh, options for capturing their offline achievements and recording them in that portfolio. An example for that could be give the learner an option of creating a badge themselves and identifying it with or aligning it with a, an achievement that they've made. A rib, they may have a ribbon for or a medal, medal or a trophy or a certificate for. Capture that in the digital form. And in that sense, you, they build essentially a digital portfolio. Any other thoughts, questions? Lots of work to do. We invite uh, others to join us, especially if in those areas that we mentioned, agriculture, water, geospatial technology, robotics, aerospace, financial literacy is one we're working with or any other content area that, that exists in the 4-H world, across the land-grant world, we've organized ourselves to um, accommodate those groups of people that are interested in providing content through e-extension. Instead of organizing as a new COP, join a learning network as a subgroup content team, and we'll facilitate the process of getting that to the live site. So, we welcome you to join us. And uh, if you have any other questions for Tony, how could they contact you? Well, let's see. CookJA1 at Auburn.edu is the best way. That's my email address. That's CookJA1 at Auburn.edu. Thank you very much. Thank you.